3D design for 3D printing, tutorial number two. Today we learn how to adapt anything to anything by creating ducks using planes, lofts and the shell tool. This video is part of a series on learning how to make custom 3D designs for 3D printing using a free Onshape account. I'll link the playlist below so you can go back to the previous episodes, including the first episode, which shows you how to make an account and set up your units. The contents of this tutorial should allow you to make ducks and other shapes that have odd end profiles with a smooth transition between them. Previously, I made a tutorial on SimScale which allows you to complete free CFD or computational fluid dynamics. You can think of CFD like a virtual wind tunnel. As you can imagine, it's integral to automotive design as well as aeronautics, as it can simulate the external wind flow over things like vehicles. It is also handy for simulating the internal airflow through things like part cooling ducts. And that's what we'll focus on today as ducts are highly suited to 3D printing, be it an adapter for an exhaust port on a laser cutter creating adapters for a dust extraction system, or creating cooling ducts, just like we have on the hot ends of our 3D printers. And to do that, we're gonna use a loft tool. And previously we learned about extrusion, where we start with a 2D shape, select it, and then give it thickness to our desired specification. Although 90% of your 3D modeling will use this tool, it doesn't account for situations where the two end profiles are different. In these situations, we're gonna use a loft tool, where we select the two end profiles and Onshape will try and join between them as smoothly as possible. This even works in situations where the two end profiles are different and even face completely different directions. And best of all, there are built-in tools to let us control how smoothly that transition is between the two end profiles. As before, we're gonna start by taking some measurements and depending on the size of your object, a ruler might be the best tool for this. However, for anything small, a set of digital calipers are indispensable, and I've got a link to an affordable set down below in the description. For irregular shapes, you might find the combination of calipers and rulers to be spot on. Write down your dimensions on a piece of paper. Don't bother measuring things like the actual fans, it's easier to find those dimensions online. It's even easier to find a 3D model of the fan and import it into Onshape. I recommend a website like GrabCAD and coming to the community library. You can then search for your type of fan, select a suitable model and check that it's in a file format that Onshape can import. For instance, STP or STEP is ideal. However, an STL is not because it's a mesh format. Assuming you've made a free account or signed in with Google, you can then click to download a zip of the file and extract the contents to a location of your choice. We now head to Onshape and if we like, we can create a new document just like last time. However, we can also create a new part inside an existing document. As you can see, I'm putting all of these tutorials together. So I'm gonna come down to the lower left, click the plus and create a new part studio. I'll then right click and rename this to something descriptive. Now let's import that fan step file that we just downloaded. We'll again come down to the lower left and click insert new element, but this time come to import. We select the file from our hard drive and then click OK. This file took less than a minute to import with a notification to say it was successful. And you'll notice new part and assembly tabs along the bottom with our fan. Back in the part studio we created for this project, to insert our geometry, we're gonna come up to our toolbar and click on derived. A dialog box will open with all of the available parts from the current document. I'm gonna start with the bottom case and click the tick and repeat the exact same steps to then derive the top case. We can see in our parts list that both pieces are in place, but we can see in the middle that they are overlapping each other. So how do we move parts within a part document? For that, we have the transform tool in the middle of the top toolbar. I'm gonna to click on the part that I wanna transform and then explore the options here. We can rotate, scale, or in this case, translate by XYZ, which will take some input dimensions. I started by using the arrows to find a rough position. It looks like minus 14 is what I want. So I'm gonna enter that, hit the tick, and our imported model is ready to work with. Assuming your source model is reliable, you now have the mounting holes as well as the air exit to base our design on. Next up, I created some simple sketches and used constraints and dimensions until all of the lines turned black. 
two sketches with two matching extrusions was enough to create a body around the fan that it could bolt to. If you'd like more detail on these steps, it was all covered in the last video. I've linked that below and it should be appearing on a card right about now. And what I'm left with is a suitable platform to build on a duct. So we're now ready to create our two sketches that we will join together with the loft. So let's create those sketches. The first one I'll put on the base of my platform. And once again, I'll use the use tool to trace the geometry that I'd like to base this off. Then I simply have lines and I use the snap feature to get them in position. That's one half of the duct. Everything is black and constrained, so I'm ready to go. Our trouble now is that we want the end of the duct somewhere around here, but if we start a new sketch, there's no surface or plane there to be able to draw on. So therefore, we'll need to make our own custom plane. I'm gonna start by creating a sketch, which is solely for construction purposes. Think of this like scaffolding on a building site to get you to the location where you wanna build. Using my measurements, I've decided that I want my duct to be roughly here, but I'll also add some construction lines so I can then use the dimensioning tool to get the angle of the outlet just right. This is the type of thing that's tricky to get right the first time, so expect to come back and edit this as you print iterations. I'll also use the dimension tool to set other crucial parameters such as how low the duct sits and how far out I want it to sit from the nozzle. Again, expect to have to edit these unless you happen to get the duct in the right position on your first try. We can see we're blue and unconstrained, so therefore we can click and drag and see exactly what the problem is. We haven't set the width of this point, so let's add that in. And now everything is black and we're one step closer. Let's look at some different ways to create a new plane. And we start by coming up to the plane tool just to the right of the middle of the toolbar. The simplest way is to simply click on a plane or flat surface and then position the plane where you want and the new plane will be offset in parallel. Something with slightly more control is to set it to plane point. And again, we click a flat surface and then a single point and it will move a parallel plane out to intersect that point. And this is what we're going to do for our first option. We'll now do one more construction sketch on the new plane. And I'm gonna do a simple line heading out horizontally and for this, the length doesn't matter at all. Therefore, I can close the sketch. I'm gonna hide my last plane because it served its purpose and then come up and create a new plane again. However, this time I'm going to set it to three point. And as the name implies, I'm gonna click one, two, three points. And now I can draw on an angle where I want the duct to come out and thus completes our virtual scaffolding so we can draw where we need to. By setting up some construction sketches, you should be able to position a custom plane pretty much anywhere that you need. So let's create the output of the duct by starting a sketch and then selecting our new plane. I'll press U for use and I'll trace some of the lines from the previous sketches. This includes my construction sketches that have the correct position for the duct exit, as well as the sketch for the other end of the duct, which I want the right hand side of the output to align with. I can align and snap with other features to complete the rectangle for the duct output. Time for the fun part, which is the actual loft. We'll select it from the left hand side of the main menu and the blue box is prompting us to click on the profiles that we wanna join. I'll start with my duct output and for the other end, sometimes it's hard to select exactly the geometry you need, but you can also select it from the sketch on the left hand side and that's just what we need. So what we have here is very basic and you'll probably want a smoother transition between the two. That's where start and end profile conditions come into place. Feel free to experiment, but by far the most handy is normal to profile. Rather than creating an abrupt transition, it aims for a tangent to smoothen the transition. The magnitude will decide how much of a tangent it tries to come out on. I think this is a little bit too much, so I'll adjust the number until I'm happy, and to me that looks much better. I'd recommend at this stage making the loft a new part rather than adding to the old one. We can now click the tick. We can see with our loft there's something a little funky happening here and that's because the output from the fan has four corners or vertices but the duct output actually has five thanks to this point here. So I'm going to go back and edit the sketch, delete this two segment line and then draw in a single continuous line in its place. Let's update the sketch and we can see that instantly our loft is updated and no longer has the error. If you are having trouble getting a clean loft, try editing the sketches to match the amount of vertices on each end. 
Now, obviously our loft is solid and that's not gonna allow any air to flow through. But in my experience, it's much easier to make it solid and then hollow it out afterwards. That means we can do things like add fillets to the outside of the loft, because when we hollow this part, the curvature from the outside will also be considered. To hollow out any part, we're gonna come up and select the shell tool. We're gonna to start by clicking on the end face, and at first glance, it looks like the part is finished. But if we hide the rest of our parts, we'll see that the top is still solid, so we're gonna click on that as well. The final thing to do is to adjust our thickness, and I made the flange two millimeters, so I'll make the duct match that. Tick the box, and the lower half of our duct is complete. The final thing to do is to join up these two parts to make them one. And to do that, we're gonna come up to the Boolean tool. We have three options, union or add together, subtract or intersect. We'll leave it on union and then input the two parts, tick the box and it's as easy as that. We've created a simple duct to go from one specific side to another. Time to revisit our 3D printing considerations because we have a problem with our current model and that's that there's no suitable flat surface to touch the bed and avoid support. This surface here is actually flat and it makes sense to print the duct in this orientation. However, we have a gap the whole way along here that would need support material that we can easily avoid. To extend this surface, we have a couple of options. The first is to go back and edit the sketch that this surface was based on, but instead let's learn something new by coming up to this tool here, which is called Move Face. We'll now simply click the surface we want to extend and input the distance. In my case, I know that's two millimeters, Compared to a normal extrude, it pays attention to the geometry either side, smoothly transitioning here, as well as matching the angle of the adjacent surface. And with that little change, we have a completely flat surface to touch the printer bed and we're ready to print. We can right click on our parts list, come to export, and assuming we're happy with the file format, we can click OK and download our file. Another consideration with many types of ducts is temperature whether it will be routing hot air, or in the case of this part, located next to the hot nozzle. So in this case, I elected to use PETG rather than PLA. When the print is complete, we can test fit versus our blower fan, and I'm happy to verify that the model I used from GrabCAD was spot on, as the fitment matches the fan perfectly. This is a simplified fictitious part, but it should give you the idea. Before we finish, a couple more lofting tips. Let's say we're going between two completely different shapes, such as this pentagon to circle. We select our starting and ending profiles as usual, but we can see here that on shape is getting confused over what to join. And that's because we have five vertices for one side and zero for the other. In these cases, we can edit the sketch with the lesser amount of vertices, and we can come to the point tool and snap a series of points around the object, trying to match the quantity from the other side. When we come back into the loft, we can see that doesn't instantly fix the problem, but if we tick match connections, we'll have the ability to click a matching point from each side. For instance, I'll click this point on the top, and I'll click the point that I want it to match to on the other profile. Instantly, you can see that the shape is able to generate. If we then refine the shape using normal to profile for the start and end conditions, we end up with a much nicer transition between the two shapes. We can extend either end with a normal extrusion, to help us adapt this duct to whatever object we need. Make the loft hollow and our part is complete. And finally, the loft tool can have more than two profiles, and you can stack a series of sketches to create a smooth contour between them. All we need to do is select them in the correct order. And the result is pretty interesting. This method is great for a fuselage, something like an aerofoil or wind turbine blade, or any other detailed flowing geometry. If you then hollow out the loft, you can adapt anything to anything and even create your own custom vacuum cleaner attachments. When creating this video, I didn't need a specific duct, but these techniques have served me well many times in the past in adapting one shape to another. So hopefully they'll help you too. We'll continue to build our knowledge and skills in Onshape in the next installment. So please look out for that. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy 3D designing for 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.